If we know the KSP value for a sparingly soluble ionic compound, it's fairly straightforward to convert that to its molar solubility. The first thing that we need is the dissociation equation. So here we have manganese 2 sulfide. We're given its KSP, asked for the solubility. We're going to begin by writing the the dissociation equation, manganese sulfide solid in equilibrium with its ions Mn2 plus and S2 minus. Now some people like to use a full ice table for this, but there's really no need just for doing KSP values. All you need to do is think about a small unknown amount of this dissolving X, and then what would the concentration of the two ions at equilibrium be? Because it's one to one, they would be equal, so they would be X and X. We also need to write the uh, KSP expression for manganese 2 sulfide. So KSP is equal to the MN2 positive concentration times the S2 negative ion concentration. Each is raised to the first power because their coefficients are 1. Then we substitute in the numerical value for KSP. And the values for the concentration that we've determined, X and X. So in other words, x squared. So to solve this, x is the square root of 2 times 10 to the negative 53, or 4 times 10 to the negative 27. So that is the molar solubility of the manganese 2 sulfide. So we have a second example. If the KSP of calcium fluoride is 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11 at 25 degrees Celsius, what is its solubility? So first of all, KSP values, like all equilibrium constants, are temperature dependent. Uh, I really should have said the temperature in the last example as well, so you need to be careful of that. This example... Um, is not one to one so we'll show you what happens when that that's the case again we start the same way though we need to write a dissociation equation for this sparingly soluble compound so caf2 solid in equilibrium with its ions which are ca2 positive <clears throat> and 2 f negative We need to write the KSP expression. It's the calcium ion concentration multiplied by the fluoride ion concentration squared. Squared because the coefficient was 2. And again, because the left side, like in all, all uh, solubility product, calculations it's a pure solid so it gets omitted <clears throat> now if we substitute in our numerical values uh, again we need to think about what happens when the calcium fluoride dissolves we get a small amount dissolving the calcium ions one to one its amount would be x but in the forward reaction it produces one calcium and two fluoride so if X is the concentration of the calcium, then the fluoride ion would have a concentration of 2X. So now if we fill in our values, 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11 is equal to X times 2X, and it's squared. <clears throat> now unfortunately, one of the big problems here in the algebra is not really at the level of a technologist. 
the problem occurs with your early algebra skills and it's just an omission. Often people will look at this and say 2x squared, but don't forget you're squaring everything in the bracket, so it's going to be 4x squared and multiplied by another x, so we end up with 4x cubed. So solving this for x, x will be the cube root of 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11 over 4. So I divided each side by 4, then took the cube root of each side. So don't forget this radical includes the 4 in the denominator. So this entire operation is done before taking the cube root. Use your brackets on your calculator appropriately, and you should get 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 to be the molar solubility of calcium fluoride. In our final example, we're going to calculate the molar solubility of calcium phosphate from its KSP value at 25 degrees. Once again, we need to consider the dissociation equation for calcium phosphate. We know that calcium ions are two positive and phosphates are three negative. So it is Ca3PO4 2 in equilibrium with its ions and when a calcium phosphate dissolves it gives us three of the Ca2 positives and two of the PO4 three negative. In considering what happens when the calcium dissolves just use your stoichiometric coefficients here. A small amount of this X dissolves, it will give me a concentration of 3X for the calcium and 2X for the phosphate. Write the KSP expression. It's the concentration of the calcium ion cubed times the concentration of the phosphate ion squared. And then substituting our values, 1 times 10 to the negative 26 is equal to 3x cubed times 2x squared. Once again, don't forget to use your bracket and to cube or square everything inside of it. So we have 27x cubed times 4x squared or 108x to the 5. So in order to calculate the value of x we're going to divide each side by 108 and then take the cube root or the fifth root sorry. So x is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 6. Now I'm just going to see if I can show you that on the calculator screen because let's see now if we can get the calculator to focus in on the screen here. Fifth root, so 5 math x root second function e e negative 26 divided by 108 close the bracket here we go 2 times 10 to the negative 6 same as our answer here on the screen